G'day everyone, welcome back to this Current on 8 review video. It's been about 5 years since we first had a look at the Southern Rail model's velocity. How they fared in the last 5 years, how, how they've uh, gone and what's changed about them since then. Let's go and take a look at them once again. But yeah, so welcome back everyone. It's been, as I say, it's been about five years since these models were, this model was actually, this very model was actually checked on this layout. Um, they haven't actually been back at this layout uh, since then. They've been in for a few repairs, so time to have a quick look at them in terms of how they have been since they have left um, the uh, the layout. There, ha there are two, video uh, two velocities now being utilized in this video. The one in front of us, VL49, in the do not push, uh, push your exiting lock, and VL40 in the PTV livery. This video will undertell their operation, their details, how they've, op uh, how they've gone with maintenance over the years, what has changed about them, and all those little uh, other things that you would expect from a review, unlike our initial review. These two models are as part of Southern Rail Models' second release of the Velocities, at this time of filming, the latest release. Alright, I've got the two models currently lined up, time to take a quick look nice and close up uh, now that we're off from the layout. Uh, we've got the two motor units of the two sets, um, so the 1100 uh, carriages, uh, of course, we're on the rotating table again. Uh, although this is a thing that we would have done in the other video, uh, in the main video, um, it's always good to take a look once again. So let's just spin around a little bit. We can see the profile of the nose, um, mostly to, uh, to most degrees. Um, looks correct from this sort of scale apparently there's word that's not a hundred percent correct in terms of um what it actually looks like but it's honestly too small to notice that that is incorrect you got your little small components there's a lot of fitted detail on these models which is really really nice um uh having little bits of detail is always good to see the interiors are also not completely empty although most of the carriage is empty there are still a few passengers inside the carriages so the train's not 100% empty uh, yeah so very finely completed models um, uh, looks really somewhat accurate the paint is nice and crisp as you can also tell um, as probably was already said um, you can see where the weathering has been done to the model uh, which obviously is not original but uh, yeah, so onto the gangway section, we can have a look at the, um, this is their proprietary coupling system, it uses a 8 pin socket onto the, which couples directly into the, um, uh, into the, uh, uh centre units, uh, so, and the trailing units also, so the other driver's units, um, also doesn't, um, which is still motored in real life, but not in the models, obviously, uh, still has um, has the opposing pins for this. They technically can turn this into a two-car unit. They didn't really run like that, but there we go. Um, inside doors are basically fully moulded, but not that you're going to really see it anyway, so unless you have them uncoupled. Uh, you know, your nice doors and stuff. Uh, the glazing looks nice on the windows. They look um, they're tinted as per like the real ones, and so they do look pretty much as per what they should. And you now can now see the PTV livery instead. Uh, you can see how how much how fine they've got the um, lining uh, to the correction uh, as per the actual livery. Uh, pretty much looks as per, uh, as per the actual livery again. Any minor little dif uh, differences might, um, they might have uh, been so small, but it's not fully that noticeable. 
The main change that you can also see on the front of the um, units is uh, the removal of the original couplers uh, that Southern Rail models had fitted to them. These are the Control P models, uh, Schaffenberg mag magnetic couplers, so uh, which uh, you can uh, link on the top uh, in the info button uh, above uh, on the top right. You can go and have a look at a video as we tested those out. Let's have a chat about some of the good things of the model over the few uh, over the last few years that they've been in operation. Obviously, there this is mostly second-hand um, uh, knowledge because these are not my models. These are not ran by me. These are ran by their own owner. So, uh, but from what's been relayed, anyways, um, they operate pretty well. Very reliable. They haven't had any proper problems uh, because if they have they would have came back here for maintenance uh, details are nice and strong we haven't had any problems with most details falling off we can already tell that or although it looks like there is a missing steps on uh, VL49 compared to VL40 or else there might be a, a difference in the actual model but uh, in the model type but there looks like there's missing steps underneath the um underneath the front doors so some details are uh, are a bit more fragile than the others but things like the mirrors and stuff have really handled pretty well uh, also the couplers have handled pretty well being uncoupled and recoupled so many times uh, it was no uh, nothing near as much of a worry as per the first run uh, that the couplers were going to be somewhat troublesome to decouple they are definitely um pretty rigid and pretty strong uh, yeah um, in the time since they uh, left um, from uh, from the initial review, so VR forty nine leaving from their initial its initial review uh, almost five years ago, the models have been because they also haven't came in tells uh, warns me that they haven't been maintained as well as they should be, uh, and has shown that they have been able to operate pretty well despite not having like regular maintenance and stuff, um, regular checkups and sort of things like that. Uh, but that's all obviously been completed as part of this um, checkup uh, while they're here for some other for some changes, which includes the Schaffenberg couplers. Uh, yeah, so electrically nothing uh, nothing seems up with them. They seem to operate uh, electrically seem to be pretty good as well. They haven't had any uh, minor faults. All the lights have, uh, have pretty much always worked, um, and even on the dual control, uh, the fact that we run the uh, we can run these on DC and DCC without too many too much hassle anyways there was apparently some problems with the original first run with some of the decoders um actually going up in smoke because of dc operation but we haven't seen any problems with these ones at late so it seems like that was um obviously sorted out as part of the new run all right so time for some of the cons of these models and there really aren't that many uh as i say the models are pretty pretty well ran uh over the years uh some of the Minor little things which are all noise in terms of a maintenance component is the um, uh, the couplers are set up with uh, screws, um, self-tapping screws that holds the coupler boxes in. So in terms of the job to replace the couplers like we did here, uh, the likely chance is I won't be able to do that too often. If these get damaged and I have to change them out to, uh, so every so often, uh, and especially with the fact with the older couplers, they did have to be changed out pretty often. Um, those, if you push too hard on those screws, you will eventually break the plastic and, well, break them. Uh, no longer be able to fit in the coupler. Uh, and that comes to the uh, to the other thing that the original models, uh, sorry, the original couplers that came in them were really delicate. Uh, you will see a shot of it on the screen now. Uh, they were very easily when you couple them up, pull them back out and they would break. They, they were not really, they weren't um, good for long term use which is unfortunate. Uh, but at least they did have centering uh, unlike these ones. Uh, the ones that are currently fitted to the, um, the Schaffenbergs, so there's no centering on them. Um, don't think there really has been. It's primarily detail stuff. Um, as I say, operationally they have been fine. Other major issue which may be more um, my allow more than anything is the amount of turning capabilities on these front couplers are really limited whereas uh, compared to um, like the, in the within carriages because within the carriages you can get around and you can easily get around our, uh, our layout uh, the 
end of carriage, so these front couplers can't actually get around the uh, can't get around like that. Of course, they probably weren't made for 18 inch corners. Uh, these are fine scale models; they shouldn't be running on 18 inch corners. But it's always a nice thing to test to see if they allowed it or not. But for obvious reasons, they didn't. Um, yeah, as I say, one of the other cons is apparently there are some detail defects on the model um, in terms of the looks compared to the real ones. Can't really tell that to be uh, to be honest, um, but if you can, uh, then well, you have a finer eye than I do when it comes to this sort of stuff. Uh, but pretty much uh, everything else of the model seems pretty much as per you would expect it to. Um, yeah, to remove the shell of the Southern Rail model's velocity are rather simple. There are six clips located inside the shell, um, three on this side, three on the other side, uh, where you can either use your nails or use a card or uh, even a prying tool. would not recommend using a screwdriver or anything with a metal head because uh, you will damage the, the actual model. So starting along from this side, you can find a point just above the bogies where you can clip under and, uh, and unclip the clips on this side, spinning around, bearing in mind not to, I'm allowed those clips to re-engage, pulling up from again under the bogey. Now you have to make sure when you unclip that you don't clip into the um, sides of, yeah, is, is make sure the clips don't engage with the underside, uh, the, what's it called, the seating. Which we are struggling to do. So it feels like it's actually on the other side, which is, uh, which is really engaging. Here we go. Then should easily lift off. And you can have a easier look. You get your six clips there, and six uh, uh, and your three clips over there. So three on each side, six all up. Because the shell is uh, flat, it can easily be put aside. Inside, we can have a look at the mechanism, which we'll have a close look now. Although I say mechanism, it's not really that you can see that much from the inside anyways. As most of the inside is covered up by the in uh, inside detail. You can see that there is a panel in the center, that is your where your motor will be sitting underneath. Uh, so yeah, and those those minor bits of electronics are your to run the lights, the headlights and tail lights. You get your 21 pin decoder socket up here, which is available, uh, which you can fit a sound decoder to if you would like the sound in the model. Default, the models do usually, if I recall, come DCC fitted. Servicing the model is kind of interesting. Most models usually use clips on, on where you can just unclip them, uh, whereas this one uses screws. So unscrewing those bottom screws will allow you to access the axles and axle boxes, and you can put um, a small amount of lubrication oil to better uh, the longevity of the operation of the mechanisms. Alright, let's do a, big, a quick crawl test with the um, velocity. Of course, each model is slightly different, and these are DCC models running on DC. On DCC, they should perform a lot better. However, we have to test out everything you know, on these models, and these are supposed to be dual DCC models. In DC, uh, we're, we're can already can assume that the models in DCC mode will run optimally well, because that's how DCC works. But let's see how they perform in DC.
we can agree that's actually pretty good. Let's do a quick start of voltage test. So, increasing the voltage from zero. Approximately 3.1 uh, volts is your startup voltage for these models and the DC operation. Alright, so let's have a look at the weight of the velocities. Um, you're probably realising some of the shots we also have a third velocity now being used because the other ones aren't actually, these are filmed at a later date. Um, so, the weight of the motor unit is approximately 400 grams for the motor. 170 grams for the intermediate carriage. And basically the same, plus minus 2 grams for the rear uh, driving unit. Just going to slot this in quickly before we end off the um, uh, go into the conclusion of this review video. Uh, we haven't actually heard much from some of the male models in the last few years. In fact, the last main post on their social media was in 2021. So we're not 100% sure what is going on with them at the time of filming this video. Well, that's that. Thank you all for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed joining me for this review video. Um, what can I say about the um, Velocities as final words? Well, they've handled well for five years, honestly. Uh, especially since um, I haven't needed to actually do anything with them in the last five years. Uh, other, other than, well, what they're uh, replacing their couplers. And that only just occurred recently. Um, it's unfortunate we can't test it in DCC mode, uh, well, that's, uh, that would be a great thing that we could test, but at the, at the moment the loud isn't operable in DCC mode. But uh, other than that, yeah, it seems like they're operating pretty much far, uh, as they were, um, obviously under DC circumstances they do operate with a bit more power uh, draw with the DCC uh, decoders fitted, but yeah. Still, as per they were, they do look a little, a bit, a little bit different being weathered now. Uh, but yeah, so they're ready to be sent back off to their owner. So until next time, uh, we'll also have our revised scores in uh, in the back, um, and it will be more based on its operation. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, watching this video. We'll catch you all in the next one.